your, your truck or on the chain, and then when it breaks away, of course, it puts it in course. the spinner. Yes. Um, take a simple cutter chain, and then you cross them. I got it. Same way as uh, on a boat or any RV. Right. And then you have a seven pole RV connector. Um, brakes, um, turn signals, and brake lights. No, no reverse lights. You'll have to work them off the truck. Um, your indicator gauge for S tube and your drive cylinder. One stored energy, and the other one's how much pressure you're putting on the drive cylinder. <clears throat> this is at from here to here, how much pressure? Not 50 foot, not about 1,000 feet down there. But you got to be putting on the delivery here to there. Correct. And that gives you adjust, you know, adjust about about how much force you're using to, to get downstream. Um, the more pressure you build, of course, the less. Um, yeah, hydraulic pump is, is set at some part you have to convert it from you know liters per minute to power or psi so at 80 bar it converts so if you're pumping over you know 80 bar which is you know, say 110 you're not going to get 26 strokes per minute because it's going to de-stroke itself but now you're asking for power so you um the more bar you, at 200 bar you might cut the strokes almost in half maybe even more so keep that in mind when you call me and say hey harold you know i'm pumping 300 feet and I'm only getting 14 strokes a minute. Well, how much pressure are you? Well, I'm at 250 bar. You're lucky to get that. At 80 bar, if you stay under the 80 bar, 100 feet with 3 8 rock, with say a 9 inch slump, it's effortless, you know, 60, you'll get 26 strokes a minute. You'll get, you know, 40 or 50 yards an hour. So we, we have that a, a, a lot of, a lot of calls come to us. The machining perform the way it's supposed to. Well, actually it is. Um, when, when they get these numbers, swing, boots, or read, they get this and just pumping water like we're doing right back into the cell. That's how they get the, the That's how they get their reading. Correct. And their numbers. Okay, we estimate that you'll get, you know, 60 yards an hour. Uh, uh, realistically, no, I mean, there's a lot of variables, you know. Um, how much Portland, how much fly ash, you know, how far you're going, what's the size of the rock, how wet it is, to determine how, how many yards per hour you're going to get. So, when, when you see, uh, you know, like this, 70 yards an hour. <laughs> I mean, you'd have to be 50 feet and it hits wet, you know, you get 70 yards an hour. Slush, you'd have to be pumping slush. Right. It's unrealistic, right. But that gives you a, a, an area to go to, you know, what, what, how much power do I want in my machine? If I want it to K70, I want to do around 70 yards an hour. Well, realistically, you might get only 58 yards an hour. But if you buy uh, TK50, well, you'll get less than that. You'll get only 30. Um, up on the control box here. Um, the, the system's on a negative ground volt, uh, negative ground volt system. So if you turn it on and, and you have blinking lights, that means something's got left on. So the remote was on and it's still blinking. The pump was on. You turn it off to clear it. Huh? On this model, no, it's going to give you RPMs too. Oh, it gives you the RPMs too? Yeah. The engine RPMs. Okay. The engine uh, throttle up and down. You're not going to get speed of the pump itself. That's mechanically done. Here, from your full control. And that speeds the pump up and speeds the pump down. Just like a water nozzle. Right. You screw it in, slow the water down, unscrew it, and speed the water up. More pressure. More pressure. That's right. Correct. Uh, now on you can have this function on here, but it costs you, you know, probably another thousand dollars. If not more. This. Yeah. Okay. So you can't have that option. It just it, you see where it says stroke. Okay. You want to operate that for me off of this? Sure. Sure. I'll, I'll explain everything oh, and then oh, we'll do the water test. Sorry, I don't want to get ahead of it because that way the, the system okay. we can break break it up a little bit. Put it back here. Okay. So um, on the, the negative fault system. Was designed so you can't start this while it's in a pump over here and hurt somebody. So that's that's why they did that. Um, mo most of the new pumps are going that way. When, my, when I hook a remote up, it's the same way. I just put a relay in there in a, a one-way directional diode, and it keeps it from you starting it up and it being a pump over. Somebody holding the hose or looking at the end of it. In. Hey, there's something in there. Oof. So, <clears throat> so you got the battery, the horn's right around back, the control block is here. If you look in here, in the brain of the Radio remote back there too. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So you got the engine here. 
Um, we use, um, this has got 10 quarts of 10W30 um, Romatella in it. So it's um, half synthetic. You would have full synthetic, but this is what the manufacturer called for. Okay. So, it, like I said, if you want to change it. We, we have a guy in Toledo that said he could get me all of the documentation for this particular pump. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, if we go around here to the other side, you'll see where the filters are housed. And every 250 engine hours, you can replace the filters. One oil fuel separator. Huh? 250 hours? 250 hours. Air, and then you have a hydraulic filter here with a restriction gauge on the other side. So if it goes to red before the 250, of course you change it out. It won't, but if it, if it did. Um, if it's a cold morning, you're going to read in the red because the oil's thick. This is at the end of the job when the oil's hot. This is when you get the true reading. Um, you got a water box here. Um, this is half uh, motor oil and half water in there. Um, they've got clear piston cups in there, so you can run hydraulic. If you buy another set, and if you buy the black ones, then you just run water. Okay. The, the black will set by the hydraulic will swell the black stuff. Okay. The, are those more expensive, those particular type, the ones that The are clear ones are, correct. Okay. Yeah. And they, they come from the factory that way. Okay. So it, it's your option. Um, I know a lot of people don't like running the hydraulic, because then now you, what are you going to do with it? You know, you got to dump it on the ground, and you got to collect it, and then transport it. If you just run water, you just dump it on the ground every job. But right now is with hydraulic oil and the clear piston cups. Okay. So you would you would stagger this. Um, if you need to fill it up, you dump one one quart of oil, and then the next time you fill it up, one quart of water. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. That way it keeps it fifty fifty mix. Um, I told you about your stroke limiter, just like a water faucet. Screw it in, slow the strokes down, strokes per minute, speed it up, speeds them up. Um, on the other side, hydraulic gauge, restriction gauge. Which you would be able to see through the... Mm -hmm. You'd see from the other side. Mm -hmm. Yes, Correct. sir. Mm -hmm. um, hydraulic, I mean, uh, diesel. And then there's a gauge on the other side. Oh, we'll show you here in a second. Here, for the diesel. She tells you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then your okay. hydraulic tank. It sits right on top. You see the weld. It sits right on top of the diesel. <clears throat> and we're using AW46. That's anywhere... Four thousand six hundred dollars. I put that bearing. I'm gonna have to move the nose bearing. I haven't turned that up. The cut ring probably messed up. Well, you can have me do that too. Since I'm already in there, it's four grand with labor. Four grand. Wow. So if you grease it and let everything run out together, and then replace it in three years, you know, versus every year, half a year, every year you go into it. Ooh, so keep greasing. This is after forty yards. So when forty leaves and fifty's backing up, grease. <clears throat> There's just uh, three grease pots. You got one grease fitting here in the motor, three back here, the shift knuckle, and two on the outlet bearing. You're going to have three on the inlet bearing. See them? One, two, and then at the bottom, three. And then on the dummy bearing, here. Bing! Okay. And so, what were the specs on that? How often do you need to grease it then? Every 40 yards, and then at the end of the job. Every 40 yards, and at the end of the job. And at the end of the job. Here, let me show you what a bearing looks like. So if, for example, uh, your job is only 10 yards, and you're done, you grease it. Grease it at the end of every job. Don't wait until you get home or whatever. You see what a bearing is. And you see why he didn't grease it, see what happened to it. So all it is is a brass bushing inside of a metal bar. So just like on a car, where you have the connecting rod, and the lowering connecting rod and the oil is your bearing. You lose the oil, of course, spin the bearing. Same with the, in the back bearing. You lose the grease, you lose the bearing. So what you're doing is, because this hopper now is holding concrete all day long and it's pumping, the grout is suddenly trying to work out of the bearing. So you grease that in the end of the job and you shove that new grout into the hopper so it doesn't dry. Okay. And use that kind, that's the best kind. Even though a little more expensive, but it'll it'll hold out better. The okay. heat also, it'll resist better. Okay, correct, yeah. It, it's I see where that becomes most important. Yeah, it's seven mm -hmm. bucks versus a dollar, that old black graphite, but that stuff, if you put black graphite in the water and squish it, it'll disappear, that stuff, man. That's a lot of And it disappears, so okay. good, good stuff. Okay. And you can buy that in Napa, AutoZone, wherever. Oh, no kidding, okay. Yes. There's a CR number, part number, you just give them the part number. Okay, well, I'm gonna be working this stuff out of the case. There you go. <laughs> right. So um, you got a little part in the tank, um, just like on the other side. 
here, here's for hydraulic fluid, and the other side is for diesel there at the bottom. See that at the bottom? Mm -hmm. It gets you a little part of the tank. You're going you're gonna to let a little bit out once a week because the tank gets hot, cold, hot, cold, you kind of station, it runs down, floats at the bottom of the tank, and then the main drive, you can see where it's sucking almost from the bottom. Not, not much, but almost, so it don't take much water. As soon as it introduces the water into the main drive, it'll blow it. Wow, guarantee it. The turbine's in the grass. In a little housing, the load is okay. So you want to drain the water off of it. The water, I mean, I go fluids like your blood. As long as you keep clean, it'll last you forever. Um, theoretically, it should last you forever. I mean, you know, there's consideration. You know, something went bad, an O-ring cut through, and, and it obliterated something else. But on the basis, it's a closed system. So, other than the water box, the packing's leaking, and, and it's sucking water through the packing, or somebody putting water straight in the tank, it shouldn't be contaminated. Because all this pump is doing is sucking fluid out of the tank, into the filter, into the cooler, back to tank. So what that pump does at 30 liters a minute. So every five minutes, it's taking this whole tank out, cleaning it, and putting it right back in all day long. Okay. So the system's closed. Okay. How many gallons we got here, Harold? 55, 60? 52 gallons in here. 52? If it's got to be changed, then you're saying, to, you're saying leak some out, top it off. Leak so you're getting fresh. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Yes. Um, if you if you leak some out, I'm talking about a, a, a water cap out of a water bottle. Right. That much. You want the really? mushroom. Yeah. Right. There's a low part in the tank, and you're going to do this just like um, oil and vinegar. You shake and you leave it on your dinner table. It separates after about five or six minutes. Um, when you come in in the morning, you would do it then. Okay. Yeah. Don't do it with the heat, with the hot oil. Okay. You wait until it cools down. Yeah, so cool. Right. Okay. But that should that be that system be changed after so much of that, that hydraulic oil? The hydraulic oil. Many hours? Yeah, um, AW46 is 4,600 hours. Oh wow, that's a lot. Okay. Yeah. But normally, if you if you take good care of it, you I don't think you ever have to change it. Right, it's right. Yeah, theoretically, if you, if, you, if you change every 250 engine hours, no. And you change your oil, your hydraulic uh, filter, I meant, um, okay. it'll last you forever. Okay. We had a pump here that we used for pumping four years, the TK50 CAC reader. In four years, we never replaced the oil not once. Not hydraulic oil, I mean. These are the these are the nuances that I need to familiarize myself yeah. with. What needs to be done first? Of course. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so you got the main drive. Um, there's an agitator pump, and then this is a cleaner pump. And I told you what they what they do. Um, the reason why I'm explaining the pump, there's a lot of stuff that you won't really. It's not practical for you, but I, I, I'm leading into something. Since the engine runs on a straight shaft, boom, 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 straight out the back. Okay. So. If you run the engine at half speed, what do you think happens? It only cleans itself half the speed and okay. cools itself half the speed. So you must run this machine all the way out. Um, it, it doesn't say, but it's at 2100 RPMs. So that you drive it all the way up until it stops. And we'll go any higher. You're done. Okay. Even if you're pumping where the five yeah, guys. 50 yards. Yeah. It don't matter. I, I know a lot of old timers are gonna come. Hey, boy, you can bump that down and turn that up, and you get the same effect. And, you know, on, on an old pump, that TK70, yes, you can do that. On this one, no, it's not a consideration. So it should be run at full. Uh, no matter what you're doing. No matter what, because your cooling and cleaning capability is cut down in half. Okay. So in theory, um, if you run this down and run the strokes all the way up, and you're running out 300 feet, you will overheat. You will because you can generate more heat than you can cool off. There's only a two degree drop between going in and the outlet of the cooler. Well, you're, if you're raising four degrees, you're missing two every every minute. So it won't take long. That's good to know. Then uh, that's an hour. It's pretty you, self explanatory. If you're running it at full, then you know you're good. You know you're good. Um, in short of something malfunction, um, this was caught halfway in, or uh, something happened to the stroke limiter and caused you to build heat. Um, there's a formula that, that we have, and it shows you about how much you know heat BTUs and, and BTUs you can generate. It's a lot. It can turn into a furnace real quick. If you're running half speed, okay. I mean, by the time you figure it out, this thing's so hot you can't get near it. Well, you, you've got leaks all over the place by then. Trust me, you will. Okay. You start blowing hose off. Oh, it's just too hot. Right. Yeah. Turn into metal. <clears throat> okay, so working on to the back. Um, shift fork. I told you where the three three fittings were. Mm -hmm. Shift knuckle and then two on the inlet. Back. All the fittings are those ones that are here back. There's nothing up here that you have to no. worry about on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. It's on your movable parts. Okay. Yes. You got uh, forward, neutral, reverse for the agitator. Um, I, I leave it in a reverse. It's always pulling the material to the cylinder. Um, the reason why you got forward is um, if you're waiting a half hour for your callback, you can kind of uh, agitate it. Agitate it. Mix That's it right. Like a mixer. Correct. That's 
that's what the forward reverse is for. But by 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 right, you're always wanting to pull it into the material somewhere. If you have it pulling it away, you're gonna have an air pocket. You're gonna be pumping <laughs> a few of the air out. That's fun. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen I've seen I've seen, I've seen it throw guys. <laughs> and so, your your T yeah. too. <laughs> Might knock out a F1, few. Yeah. You got the money shot. <laughs> oh yeah, Juan Pablo. Juan Pablo used to be us. Uh, we we used to have him pumping dunker too. Okay. We we sent them out. We we first the first job he had was here in the shop. He was helping Harold, yeah. and then he started going out to pump. And uh, Ooh, yep, baby, right pumping. in the face oh, everywhere. You look back at that money shot. <laughs> 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 now you know how your girlfriend feels, don't you? <laughs> Will that be edited? Will that be edited? Don't edit that. No, no, no. We're not going to edit that. We're going to send them. Send Juan Pablo this video. So, so for uh, sure. Three outriggers like a tripod. Two in the back on either side and the one in the front. So you lower it, pinch it, put these down, and then tighten it up. And that brings attention off the feet. If, this is if you're going to store one job. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah. So the outrigger should be on, I mean, obviously when you're pumping everything. Uh, not necessarily. No, um, the machines are small enough. If it's a CK70, yeah, they, they should be because they don't pull the rear end of your truck. These smaller ones from a 50 on down, no, it's not really consideration. If you get a 350, now if you're holding it with a 150, no, you better use the outrigger. Because uh, we're, we're gonna have a one side. Okay, so that you're probably fine. be a consideration. I think you'd be okay. You're fine. Um, a, a 1500, eh, I would probably put the outrigger down okay. because that forward jar is gonna blow the rear end out eventually. Okay. You're going to see the truck. I mean, you've probably seen them. Yeah. The truck's rocking pretty good. You're like, yeah. Mm, that's interesting, you know? Right. So but, what you're saying is, is if, it, if it's stable by the truck and the truck is stabilizing it, you don't have to worry about it. Then. Don't right. worry about it. Yeah. And, and it's a one ton on top of that? Not a consideration. Um, if you were on, if you move up to a 70, then yeah, I'd, I'd use the outriggers every time. I mean, that's the reason why they usually gave you a hydraulic outrigger. Probably so big. Just put them all the way down. Mm -hmm. um, more, more to see if you're stored on a job. That way, um, when you put concrete in, it doesn't flip off. Yeah, all right. Okay, so um, you have your main, your main flap is to let all the concrete out at the end of the job, and it's through a nine-inch hole right out to the bottom. Right out the bottom. Yeah. Um, fenders. Um, got your brake lights on either side. Yeah, yeah. Because. Because as you see, there's a bearing. And as soon as you it. grease it too much, boom, you see it squirt out. So you can't, you can't squirt it out inside, right? In, inside, inside the hopper, right? right. Mm -hmm. um, now this hopper grate, because they're so small and so little, these got bolted down. Now you can take them off, and there is a proximity switch in there. And when you lift it up, it cuts the machine off. The downfall is you take them off and you use reverse. The concrete lifts it up and it shuts you off. Okay. So um, we put these back to factory settings. This is how it reads from the manufacturer came. Now, I know a lot of guys took these bolts out and left them out. That's a few. Okay. Um, the same with... So, but you're saying once that concrete lifts, and there is a proximity, it'll lift yeah, and it'll you, shut the machine down. Right. If you look in here, you'll see the proximity switch. See it? Yep. The yep. lie? Yep. Yep. Because you're reading a piece of metal, and when it lifted, it goes away. Okay. Boom. It'll shut down. That, that stops the agitator and the forward gear. So to get into the water, uh, into the hopper, Harold, how does he get into the hopper to clean it up and do Okay, it? so you, you take these 916 bolts off, two of them, and then you can just lift it up. Okay. And they're about a half inch long. Right. And that's rubber on a rubber isolator pad. So, like I said, you that's up to you if you want to leave them off. I suggest bolting them down. You know, it's not worth, you know, somebody, if somebody's stupid enough to put a, you know, a shovel in there and it'll snap it off and break, well, you can stop the machine and dig it all out of there. But that, that's up to you. Um, Schwing has gone now, um, especially on their booms, they've got two metal bars here that latch over and you pull out and you can access it. So everybody's going down to a lockdown version. So that's where the future is. Um, when I started with Schwing, there was five stickers. Now there's 58 stickers. Every, and every one of these ended in a fatality. Not somebody hurt, fatality. Wow. So every sticker that you see, somebody has done. Well, so what was, the, here. what was the main cause of fatality then? <clears throat> Lifting the grate up, stuck their hand in there, oh. someone hit a Ford. I heard, a lion's just told me in their shop, the guy had the remote here, and he bent over to get something and turned it on with his hand down there. Boom, locked off four fingers. In the factory shop. Son just of that a easy. bitch. You, you forget about it, boom. Wow. Wow. Um, it'll cut one of them four by fours clean in half. And there's 200 bar it shifts from. That's you know, 5,000 PSI it shifted. Every time it shifts over, home, it ain't gonna stop you. You'll be lucky if it pulls your arm off. Lucky. We're probably pulling the end. 
He won't go spit that guy out. Same with the agitator. Um, over the years, you can see the e stouts have moved back. Um, Reed still uses just one, but you know most of the manufacturers are going to six or seven of them. They've got one here, they've got one here, they got one on the other side, they got one in the hood, they got them in the water box, they got them everywhere now. Just where you know that, that composition is for you to hit something when it pulls in. They're hoping you hit it. Oh. That's what they're hoping for, but not yeah. always. So um, that that kind of that kind of portion, you'll have to make determination what you know whether you not want to get sprayed off. Or not. Okay. All right, so we'll start her up and see that pressure up. Yeah. So I'm turning it on. It's still blinking. I beat the horn. It goes to solid. Yeah. Same as with cleaning your hoses out. I do the same thing. I, I, you know, I just do the reverse psychology on them. <clears throat> they, they, you'll, you'll watch them. You know, they'll, they'll be coming back so far and they'll kick off the hose and throw it to the side. Come on, Paul, man, keep pumping, keep pumping. I turn the machine off and go, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? I said, I gotta clean my hose off. Oh, man, we gotta keep going. I gotta clean my hose out. Let me go get it. No, fuck it, we'll get somebody to do it for you. Okay, if that's what you want to do, I'll turn it back on. <laughs> I gotta, have, I should go out with him for a couple weeks. <laughs> yeah, I learn quick. <laughs> Yeah, sure. it, it makes them, you know, right. they... Well, when we see my a lot of my brother on the till 25 and they keep snaking that line back, you know, until they absolutely have to cut it off, you know what I mean? Right, so, right, right. But well, eventually it gets to them, yeah. yeah. Especially when you're in 300 foot range, yeah, they yeah. gotta kick them off, yeah. Right. But hey man, I'll do it myself, it don't matter to me, but uh, they watch me out there, I'll be. Tell me, we'll do it, we'll do it! <laughs> okay, if that's what you want to do. <laughs> so when you went out to run your jobs, were you by yourself or did you have somebody with you? Normally by, by himself. You were by yourself? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's how I knew the trick buckle was really easy. Yeah. You know? Well, <laughs> I worked at General Motors for 33 years. We learned how to trick buck them too. So, but, but we learned from guys that knew how to do it. You know what I mean? Right, so, right, right. so I got to, yeah, so. Uh, well. Look, look at that pup, man. He's out there killing me. Jesus. <laughs> half hour out there. <laughs> uh, so do they, have, do they make attachments at any point where, they, where you would hook those? hoses to wash them out or something. Have you ever seen anything like that on those? I, I have, but they're dangerous. Oh, I mean, they are? Yeah. Um, I, I'll show you how to, how theoretically, how we wash out. Um, so, when, when you, when you're pumping, um, the, the, the hopper holds about one wheelbarrow. And uh, on a good 200 foot at two inch hose, you're about another wheelbarrow. So when you, they get down to a corner and I Did see you say them, 200 foot? 200 will foot. be a wheelbarrow in that 200 foot? That's right. Just, just in the hose. Um, I tell the finisher, listen, when you get about two wheelbarrows, let me know. I'll cut it off. Okay, pump man. Oh, cut. I stop it. Hopper's full. I walk over there. They need three wheelbarrows. I pump one hopper down, pump another hopper down, stop it. If he needs one wheelbarrow, after that hopper is done, I know with 200 feet, I got another wheelbarrow. I'll start putting hot water right in the hopper. We start filling it all the way up. 
I'll go ahead and turn it on. I tell them when you get water, go up to the side. Up, 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 oh, oh, oh. Go to the side. And then if you have a five gallon bucket, hell, you can wash that down with the hose with the water coming out. I kick the trap door loose after the water. I pump all one all the way down. Wash out in reverse. I'll put the machine in reverse and have it just stroking in reverse. And I'll just put it in the ass in and you'll see it clean itself out. You can actually look in there. When we take this off, you can actually see down in there. You can see if it's clean or not. And when you're looking through here, you can see it. I'll clean it up, put my reducer back on, start filling the hopper back up. I'll put now the machine and the hoses are clean. I'll put my sponge right in the reducer. Hook it back to the hose, fill it up one more time. Boom, now you put your hose, the sponge through the hoses. They clean your hose out. Okay. I'm done. I start, I get a third hopper, start filling it back up. I grab my hoses, my clamps, put them up here, put them on the truck, um, roll my water hose up. At the last part, with the reducer up, I still have a full hopper. I can wash my hands, my boot, my face off, whatever. Bust the reducer, and that'll wash all the water from the street out. Okay. Sand and rock on the street. Got okay. the reducer on the truck, and I'm gone. Okay. Three hoppers. So I noticed you had water stored in the hopper at, at any given time. So how much water? Would you, when you're when you're cleaning out, you leave in the hopper, do you, or do you? Um, no, all, all the way, all, all the way. way. Because okay. um, what I'm doing is, um, at the beginning, um, I'm getting a five gallon bucket. Now you can use, um, if you ever drive by and you see them old couches sitting on the side of the road. I pull the Harold, but that's a two inch one. A two and three inch. He's getting a... Three inch. Three, for three inch system, yeah. This two, is for three inch? Two and three. Okay. Yeah, okay. It'll fill up that big. Oh, okay. Water. Put okay, in the and four. Um, but uh, I, I also grab sponges too, because if you lose that, what are you going to use your shirt? That's real fun going home naked. You know what I mean? <laughs> Trust me. If you're in a boom truck, you're right. going home naked. Okay. If you're using your pants and your shirt, oh. you can tell when somebody didn't bring their sponge so ball. You're out there in an old track couch, naked. An old couch does heavy duty foam. Uh huh. Yeah. When you lose, when you lose okay. that, you lose that. So you just Which you will. <laughs> you, you, we what, lose. What's this gonna? What could this cost? You know what I mean? It's nothing. It's like yeah. ten bucks. Yeah. That's it. So, Not even. <laughs> okay. I, I worked for the manufacturer for a number of years. Chelsea went around the wash rack and they're half naked, <laughs> trying to hurry up and go home. <laughs> oh, I see you love your fun ball. <laughs> roll so your the sun pack. Track. He said those, and he said, okay, so in the morning, um, before I do anything, I pull up to the job site. Um, I, I try to, because on the basis. No, the cost, the cost is four dollars. You guys can make me up. You would have used as a price sheet for sure. We we'll give you one right now. Okay. Yeah, we'll give you one right now. My brother has always only been on the pay. He's never been on the business. Right. So look into the job site. By nature, you want to go. Hello. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Okay. Um, can I pull right to it? Well, no, we got trucks coming in and out there all day long. Okay. Can I go around back? So um, now, if I know that, <laughs> now if I know it's around 200 feet, trust me, I'm gonna make it 250. I'm gonna get you for 50 dollars. Oh, I just, uh, man, I can't, I can't have that. You know, I mean, I always think of some, some way. I can, trust me, I'm gonna get you for 50 bucks. <laughs> so if it's close to 200, no, I'm gonna get you. But if it's if it's 180 feet.
getting off and on the job efficiently without breaking something. A shovel, a hammer, blowing a tire in the truck, all that's profit here. That's the thing I So um, I, I bump the job and make sure there's nothing in, in my way. I get on the job. The second thing is I find out the motor's going to go. That's what we're going Because when the driver, the driver's going to let you get about maybe 30 gallons. But we're going we're gonna to have water. The other 50 gallons is his. He's not going to let you dust. He's going to wash the truck up first. You can't rely on, oh, pump in. Go ahead and use the driver's water. We'll get you some water. Jelly. That's right. And this is Cody. So you don't want to go slow enough that it half moons through the hose and it pushes. That'll fuck you up because your thing above will be dry. You don't want to go too fast where the concrete jumps over the water. You know what I mean? So you want to do about a click every second and a half on the pump. That's about from all the way in, that's about three full turns all the way out. There's about six turns. So about halfway. And that'll that'll spiral through and you'll prime out every time no problem. And and this is a, a learning curve. For, even on any machine. You can get on two five hundreds and it'll be that so um, you, you're gonna try um, on the basis three turns is, is enough for every machine, but it might be. Un favor, sigue grabando aquí, porfa, para yo atender el otro cliente. You know you'll make it down 150 feet and you'll fall. Okay, maybe I'll go do that. I'll back it down and have a turn. Next shot, you go out 300 feet and it doesn't. You know, that's the area right there. So, Por favor, sigue grabando. Así como está. Yeah. That's, that's, that's Was feasible. 
three pumps, four pumps a day, what could you effectively do in three days? Three days. Yeah. If you start about six in the morning and you end about eight o'clock at night, you do three days. Six, you know, an hour there, an hour the next job, an hour there, an hour the next job. Every four hours out of the back. So out of a bigger four, four hours every job. Every job. Okay. Uh, on, on a 15 yard job, yeah, about four hours. Okay. If you do one 30 plus, well, that's what I need you to do. Kill you. I need you to do the breakdown too when it pumps over a certain amount of yards with the charge. You know, for a breakdown for a couple of pounds. Um, yeah, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that will help. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. like I said, 30 plus is going to kill you on the call. That's, that's where you're going to. And, and what, what is nice is, um, and you're going to have to learn this as you go on. But uh, I mean, I know I'm giving you a lot of information. You're gonna yeah, you kind of lose a lot yeah. of it. But on the call, that's why this is going to be good. Because the machine is so easy to clean out on a callback, if I'm just going to rough wash down, I like to wash down and just rough wash and, and, and wait, sit and wait. Yeah. That's not clean the machine out, clean the water off, grease it or anything like that. Boom, blow it out with water, blow, blow it up with the hoses, I'm done. I'm sick. I'm waiting around for an hour with my hour call. If you get there, I go sit that back in, boom, boom. We prime out, we go again. Throw another one of these in. Yep. I'll mix it in the bucket, and I move the truck and sit down and wait, or I'm going straight to the truck, or, you know, get the off the pump or whatever. But usually on the basis, you've got an hour call. If he goes, well, let's see how much this goes, and then I'll order my call. Ooh, you're in trouble. It might be two hours. No, no, no. I, yeah, never let it sit. Right. So I, as soon as he tells me that, boom, I, I go there and start watching out. Okay, I'll, I'll sit in the truck or whatever, hot summer, you know, for an hour, then one third, for an hour, three months, month, whatever. But, and then um, when I when I wash down, of course, it takes me about a half, half hour to wash down. The right way. I clean the water box, clean the machine, and all the concrete out of the hopper. About a half hour. And then about two hundred gallons of water. So if you want to bring your own water tanker, it's about 200 gallons. You can, you can wash out 200 feet in the machine with about 200 gallons. Good to know. Well, then the other thing is, it's going to cost me about $3. Right. Okay, so you break down on top, you're in the middle of the road, you can dump that until they drive like that. You blow that up real quick, you throw that under the back and open the door, let's stop at the pool. You might have to rent a horse when you dump it up, but it'll be cost you. I'm going to be burning the chip and it's off the ground somewhere. So it's going to be tough. I'm going to see the burning. It's nothing wrong with it. It's fine. Now you might never use it. You don't ever use it, but if you do, you I got some in a driveway and they rolled down and went into a manhole. Oh, you got me good. You got me about five hundred dollars worth of food. Like that. Clean the door. Get your solid light. Hold it ready to go. Right. Here we go. Turn the machine on, the blink one, you wait for the second blink, boom, it locks. Right? You hit the horn, you got the solid yellow light. Now you're connected with this. Now you're connected. Correct. You up. Pump on. Pump off. You got the reverse. You hit pump on. You hit the reverse light. Pump off. Both lights go out. Pump forward. Turn off. Boom. We're gonna go back to flashing. So you call me and say, Harold, uh, I went out 5,000 feet and it started flashing. Well, it lost communication. Okay. Either something got close to your frequency, like one of them 900 hertz megahertz walkie-talkies. If they're so used them on jump sites, they do interfere with you sometimes. And airport. If you get, if you're right at the right under the tower, it might you might be consideration. But other than that, it's a random code. You, you don't usually get too much interference. Okay. Every time you send a code, it's randomly floating to the next code. So okay. there's a million combinations. Okay. Um, this remote does run other machines. Um, you have the variants, but only on a read. You can't take these and run this a Schwing or a Food Planter. On a read, you can marry them to different machines. So if, if you got this machine and you got three others like it, and that operator lost his remote, but this operator's coming in but running his machine, you can take his remote and marry it to his machine. You can have that function. Okay. <clears throat> it's just a teleteach system. It's round back. You see it, it says auto teach. You press this and you press the on button. And as soon as it stops blinking, it knows the code. You turn the machine off, you turn this off, it locks the code in. Okay. And now if you find the remote, then you're going to have to do it again because now it's learned this new remote. It's gone on that one. You got to keep going. Just go right Correct. Okay. So, but if you took it off this machine, it'll remember it. But if you have the two machines running, it'll run both machines now. So <laughs> that could be trouble. Yeah, so you'll have to you'll you'll have to marry that to another remote. Okay. Or not not put no, it on we're remote. We're not gonna have to worry about that for a while.
<laughs> so, okay, so there's your remote. All right. Oh, um, let, me, let me put some new batteries in for you real quick. I hope you enjoyed okay. the video. Thank you for watching. To continue seeing more content like this, don't forget to subscribe. Also, you can just go right here on this link to our website, liveequipment.com, for a complete list of equipment available for sale. Or just keep navigating to our channel. Have a great day.